biggest barrier to walking and bicycling around this town is the hill. And so our first session tonight um, is discussing how to deal with the hill. How do we how do we make the hill easier to walk and bike? It's a relatively, it's one of the. It's not as bad of a grade as as you have. Across. It is more than brainstorming. It is starting to begin to like to see what is possible and what citizens would like to see possible. That by more important than than just see what it is, but what citizens really want, what people really want and like to see us explore. So the DTA really, I think, gets um, an enormous amount of credit. When they decided to have racks on the bikes, just racks on the bikes at all, was a huge step forward. And then when they started doing it year round, it was a great boon. Um, I think that Dennis said last year there were 27,000 um, bikes that were hauled on DTA buses. One of the things that we talked about was um, just conditioning, that when people on a nice day get on their bike and decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I can do, and they get up the hill once. Um, by the time they're at the top of the hill, they might be a little sweaty, but there's a real sense of accomplishment. Tonight we're talking about safer routes to school. We want kids to be able to walk and bike safely. We're learning that kids are, able, are much more apt to be able to pay attention in school. They have lower obesity weights, rates and are just, just do a lot better in school when they have uh, an opportunity to be active and fit. There are huge issues in getting kids to be able to walk to school. We have the issue of 6th Avenue East. It's really fast. Kids, We're going to need to be able to help kids get across there, but also 8th Street getting across. But then also the bus, uh, the buses choose to pick up people two blocks from where their school is. So we just really want to be able to encourage biking and walking to school. When you look at the obesity rates in children, in the last 30 years they've doubled. When you consider adolescents, the numbers have tripled. So that's a big deal, and uh, Safe Routes to School promotes activity. and. It has the idea in mind of preventing obesity and promoting health. Um, if a child can bike or walk to school safely on their own, this sense that they can get, and I know this from my experience, where I started biking four or five miles to swim practice across town when I was about 13 or 14, and I really like the independence. I have kids that are becoming school age. One who goes is going to go to the school next year, and my wife and I really want them to be able to ride their bike to school and walk to school. It's, you know, it's like a nine block walk and that seems, I don't want to bust them to that or drive them. They can walk that. Promoting cycling, promoting pedestrian movement uh, in the city, helping our kids become more active uh, uh, is, is a good idea. I'm here specifically to speak to the business opportunities around active transportation. And for me, um, you know, I'm speaking specifically to the things that the St. Paul Area Chamber of Commerce members uh, have participated in and also the um, tie-ins that St. Paul Smart Trips, the TMO in St. Paul, has done to kind of activate the community, get folks more involved in biking, walking, and other multimodal transportation activities uh, in and around the city of St. Paul. Smart Trips staff will work with the neighborhood groups, the community groups, um, churches, schools, things like that, and um, help develop programs that encourage biking and walking among the community. I think cities around the whole country are really looking at bicycling and pedestrian and active transportation as a way to make communities, you know, improve the quality of life in communities. I was, I just had the opportunity to, to attend the National Bike Summit in Washington, D.C., and uh, the mayor of Indianapolis um, was talking about how he's investing in bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, multi-use trails all over the city to encourage businesses to relocate there and try to encourage talent to stay there. And there's a big battle between Chicago and Seattle, who's gonna have the most you know, um, miles of protected bike lanes, cycle tracks. And so it's, it's not just Duluth, everybody's understanding that to have a community that 
attracts talent and, and attracts businesses, you want to improve that quality of life. People often think about MnDOT as having the engineering piece of it. We might, you know, typically fund infrastructure projects. We also do fund some education and encouragement activities, but that's where the Department of Health can step in and do even more with education and encouragement. So there's funding available in lots of different areas. Today is National Bike to Work Day and all across the country communities are rallying around uh, biking and active living and really celebrating um, the, the momentum that's happening nationwide of building a healthier, uh, more vibrant communities with amenities and education around biking. Whether uh, you consider it as an environmental reason, an individual health, a community health or an economic reason. Um, bicycling more, I think, will benefit your community and benefit you as an individual. So Bike to Work Day is a good promotion and Active Transportation Week is a great step to take to promote it all week long and hopefully it'll get incorporated into people's lifestyles. Biking to work and running errands by bicycle uh, I think is a great alternative. Uh, for us, we're in the middle of downtown where it's very congested and especially in the summer it gets even more suggested, congested and so we want more people to come down there and we want it to be more convenient and we see bikes as a way to do that. Uh, so we have a bike rack, we're delivering by bike, a lot of our employees bike to work, just trying to be supportive and encouraging of it. 60% of children biked or walked to school 50 years ago. And over the ensuing years, as the automobile absorbed the open space in our cities, uh, people became more enamored of the, bi of, of the automobile than of the bicycle. And we have lost a certain amount of our mobility. I uh, participated in a presentation by the Centers for Disease Control of their five-year longitudinal study of obesity in America. I was stunned by the numbers that 30 percent of children 25 and under are obese or clinically seriously overweight. That's 60 percent of Americans are overweight or obese. That 75 percent of trips by children 15 and under are by motor vehicle. We have a whole generation of mobility challenged children. We need to do something about this. to see the enthusiasm for biking in our community and a, a commitment to a healthy living, uh, a way to save some money that you're not buying so much uh, gas to put in your car. And it's really reflecting the, the sense of values and uh, the ethos of our community. So, you know, we live in this beautiful community with great topography and a lot of natural beauty and now committing to building trails and committing to that healthy uh, living kind of brings it all together in a really exciting way. And you're seeing the enthusiasm for biking in our community today and, and will carry forward uh, through the years.